So this is the short code, right, that I need this, yeah, right? Okay. Essentially, to present what they want to be here. So, then, oh, why does it move that? Wait. Okay, it doesn't go that way, no? Right. Right. Kind of okay, okay. So there are things I would like to do during this hour and discuss during this hour thing. One is uh, presenting semantics in RDF. One is about user interaction on RDF knowledge bases, and the other one is about the implementation and technology, especially about path resources. So I will mention a few projects I'm interested in in the end, but I would like to show I mean, how things fit together in the context of the project that we're working on. It is a five days. It is a hospital interaction with the base. Okay, so why five days? So this is a small database that they've done when I'm working in the research. And I thought it was an ideal use case to test semantic technologies. Because first of all, it's an information hub. So it's a database of mutation to disease and organism. And also, in you know, contain information on the effect of chemicals, how this chemicals effect is altered due to gene mutation, pathogens, and so on. So it connects a lot of different kinds of information. And at the same time, it's a UTIC database. So actually, I think that UTIC databases are probably the ones that would benefit most from the semantic web. Because it's an easy platform to integrate uh, information. So this is just an example of information in this database. The chronic mutation of a gene and a pathogen affects the activity of a chemical in actually the disease process which involves host and pathogen. Okay? So it's pretty complex information yeah, that we need to model. So the idea, okay, let's try to see whether with semantic web technologies we can actually do something with this database. No? So I started with a pretty classical approach of database and the mapping to RDF with which you are doing. Then I did some mapping of the URIs to go in Pro and other resources. And then I put it into part of endpoint. No? And then the question is, does it do something? Does it, is there some real benefit? Okay? Like, uh, does it actually improve the possibilities of people, of the end users, to analyze the content of this database? Okay? So we have this database. Before it was living as a related, it's a hub. Now we put it in this sort of naked data world. And we see something changed in practice for users. And the answer is actually not really. Okay? So the first thing that all people ask is actually, where is the schema? How do I build it? And this is somehow positive, because you think, OK, we have all this stuff to mesh up information. And then if people want to put in a complete schema, they are basically on the starting point. But uh, I think there are a set of problems for which uh, it's not easy to use this kind of resources in RTF that I divide into semantics, queries, and technology. So one, one, one thing is that, uh, so where we put on top of semantics, and where we say what does RDF mean? You know? We are exporting this data about host-pathogen interaction, you know, what is an interaction? Where do you define it? Traditionally, you would define it in ontologies, as some sort of interpretation on top of your RDF uh, knowledge base. No? You export everything in RDF, and then you start with an ontology to construct, to assign some meaning to the state. But I think there is a lot of semantics in which can be already expressed in RDF itself. And I think this is something that matters for a set of reasons. So, these are some of the reasons that I can think of. One is that this information is on the web, not the exported, this information from five days on the web, and there is actually no control of its usage. So, some people will just take this RDF and mesh it up with their information and just use it. So, if you don't include some semantics in RDF, there is no guarantee that you just use our ontology or something. There is another aspect that is the web is about easy publishing of information. So like in this case, I mean this is a resource that needs to be exported to other users. We don't really have time to wait to define a comprehensive ontology because people want to export it now. It's either RTF or XML. So we have to use what we have now. And another aspect is that there are many use cases that actually don't have all for ontologies, like graph analysis. I mean, a typical use of this uh, information in this database from users is actually to look for clusters of interacting genes. So this is the use case that can be already addressed at the RDF level. No? So the issue, the issue is then how to define best practices for an optimal RDF representation 
which can come to prevent your, let's say, web-based or draft-based use cases, and which can also facilitate the construction of a specific application specific on topics. So with this kind of idea in mind, I went over this uh, Friday's project. And so the thing is, what is needed for an expert, effective RTF expert? Actually, the, the, probably the most the thing is something that is not even in the RTF world, is quality of information provided. Okay? I mean, the thing is that users of uh, this information we provide in the RTF have a very limited know-how of the data source. Okay? So it's up to the provider to embed uh, all that they can in the RTF. And by this, I mean, they need to embed more semantics that is present in the original database, database schema. For instance, there is a lot of semantics that is actually in, uh, in curation manuals. If you read the curation manual for curators, for this uh, database, they actually specify when to change gene identifiers. Okay? So they have a pragmatic definition of URIs. And this is something you should include at the RTF level. And there is a lot of background knowledge and so on. So in this uh, experiment, if you want, the main thing in exporting the, the content of this database to RTF has actually been to redesign the database itself. Okay, so to define a new schema which was defined to embed more information to be then represented in RTF. So I'm going now over, I mean this is a very complex schema that I cannot really describe in detail now, but I want to go around a few issues I mean, a few points. So one is how do you work on the conceptualization of this database? So this database is a, a hospital interaction database. And if you saw the original schema, there was a big table called interaction. Okay, so now what is an interaction? It's very difficult to define in this, in this case. The interaction is something that was linking actually a gene to an effect of a pathogen on a host. So, Sometimes even linking the gene to a chemical and this effect of the pathogen cost. So in the schema design essentially, the idea was to keep it simple, so to define information only in terms of basic concepts. So in the new scheme essentially, uh, all, the, all the tables that carry some attribute, that carry some real information, are actually relative to simple things like somehow intuitively understandable concepts like process, organism, biological entity perturbations and the concept result. So the conceptualization is basically expressed in terms of simple statements, okay? Which we may think that could facilitate the building of ontologies and also the alignment of this kind of information to other resources. Another example is about the definition of URIs. No? So it's tempting somehow, I mean, you have genes and you think that all the issues mapping this gene URIs to some URI schema, but if you look at the information in five days and that we used, there are actually different ideas for genes. And actually there are three ideas for genes that have a different have an interesting um, implication on identity. So for instance there is a reference, a reference, a reference physical gene. I mean that is the gene biologists refer to where they talk about the database identifier. Okay? And they know very well which is a community of it. Like this is a general information, general annotation. It's not necessarily specific to the case I'm starting now, but it's background knowledge that we want to know, okay? And then there is an experiment specific gene. So, I'm describing the observed interaction with the perturbation on a gene and observed phenotype, and this gene has its own URI, but, I mean, you don't basically cannot, can never say that this gene is equivalent to another gene in the design of your RTF, so the URI level, because this is essentially a deduction to me for a specific analysis. So the equivalence of your eyes at the experiment specific gene is actually something that you only deduce. So for a given uh, use case, you can see under which condition you consider two genes the same, and then move on. And then, okay, this is more specific to the schema, there is also a concept of the gene as after it has been altered, in order to avoid some ambiguity and so on. So these are a few ideas why you can embed this kind of semantics if you want, in this case, in three schema, the directly must to RTF again. And, and then there is a set of, let's say, best practices that are pretty common sense. So of course you want to map uh, terminologies to common ontologies, you want a coherent approach to represent unknowns, missing and negative information and the like. And also you want to avoid RTF constructions 
maybe we change meaning if only subset of statement is taken. So in case of negative information, the other one has not as a property, rather than has something and then has not. Okay, ah, that's me? Well, okay. <laughs> so in brief, uh, how does the overall things work? We get Fabrice, now we use a new schema, we map it to the short queue, okay? So then we have uh, essentially a system. We add an inference engine on top of it to uh, rise the level of uh, you know, abstraction, so the simple property that the gene has phenotype, and then we provide it to users through some interface like FedFinder to find relations automatically and so on. So, to cut this short, this had a good reception, people is happy with it, we have a physical way to query information and so on, but there is some limits, and the limits are essentially that uh, there is a limit that they the triple stores and Usually you don't know actually what is inside, when they're updated, and all this kind of stuff. Which is basically very difficult to use this technology in practice in production. Okay? And that's it. I mean, the last slide, let's say... So if you look about the... How much is... I mean, how many papers cite semantic web in uh, PubMed, it's actually decreasing the number of papers cited in semantic web, right? So I think that the semantic web is a kind of technology, so unless we start with some uh, simple solution that works for real now, I mean, uh, it won't go that far. There are a set of competing uh, technologies that are taking place, I'm sure. Okay, that's it. I'm interested in this uh, kind of process if you are the hackathon. Best practices to represent RDF, visualization system, and work on service with the context, and we'll make more of some database resource like Bypass.